what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of BS for Build. In today's episode, Eric is going to be welding flanges, like little mounty thingies, onto the top of our fuel cells so we can throw our fuel pumps in there. And then I'm going to be working on the radiator system. Hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have a coolant system and a fuel system. Stay tuned. Here at BS for Build, you know we have the uh, built not bought thing that we definitely started. Anyways, uh, nobody makes these little lip ring things so you can convert a uh, standard fuel cell into a M5 fuel cell. So Eric went and got a giant large chunk of aluminum and jumped on the mill over the last two days and, um, well it's a lathe, not a mill, and, and lathe these babies up. So these um, let our fuel ring thing snap onto them and then we can screw into it and everything else like that. So Eric's gonna get started uh, by doing some magic. I don't know what he's gonna do, probably prep, drill holes and then uh, get ready to weld these things into the fuel cell. And then let me show you the radiator situation. Yesterday I was in here off camera doing a little bit of a planning and designing uh, how the, the radiator system is going to mount into the front of this car. And uh, I took everything apart. I tried to thin out the radiator a little bit, took the AC condenser off, and I uncovered uh, a bit too much damage. You can see some of the gouging um, there and up there um, in the radiator, as well as it's like warped. Uh, from the accident. So I ordered a new radiator, but this one's still good enough for us to do like test fitting and test mounting. Uh, we'll, we'll use it to mock everything up. As well as the radiator shroud is cracked, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and repair that because it's quite an expensive new part and there's really nothing wrong with just like plastic welding a crack in a radiator shroud. I don't see any reason not to do that. So that's the system that I gotta kind of uh, reassemble and get ready to mount in and it mounts in uh, right about here and here and it's gonna lean back towards the engine. You guys will see it. I'm going to get started and I'll show you guys when I get something together. All right, you can see Eric and I decided where we want to put the different fuel system pieces and then pulled out that ring so we don't melt it when Eric is welding. Got all the foam and stuff out of there so everything here can be heated up pretty well. Now Eric's gonna cut a hole in there while he's doing that. I'm working outside on the frame. Uh, we need these little tabs to hold our radiator system. Now these ones are made out of aluminum but they're a really good reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one off of the car. Uh, that way I can take it inside and then I'm gonna go ahead and build a duplicate of that out of steel. Eric went ahead and cut out the holes and then tack welded our flanges in place. Now we were gonna uh, test fit all the fuel system but there's residual fuel in there and Eric's gonna be heating this thing up real hot welding around it for the next little while. So uh, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna believe in our design. We're gonna believe in our, our proof of concept and we're gonna go with it because we don't wanna blow up Eric. We need him for the next few months. Thank you. So uh, Eric's gonna start welding away on that and then over here I, uh, have built my first one of two of these these little guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish making this. So you can see it's just like a piece of metal with a little lip on the end. And then there's a piece of plastic that kind of clips into it. So I'll go ahead and um, I need to weld this up to reinforce where I had to make these really raw cuts. I'll weld that up, clean it up, and then make one more. And then I'll show you where we're gonna attach them to the vehicle.
All right, the time that I built two stupid tabs, Eric has fully welded up the, um, the bungs, the flanges, whatever you want to call them for our fuel tanks, our fuel pumps into our fuel tank. So this little plastic locking thing slides over that. That gasket goes right in there. And then we have this like swivel lock ring that goes on the top. Those are out in the car, I ordered two new ones. Um, so what we're gonna go ahead and do now is test fit our fuel pumps into our fuel cell. We test fit our fuel pump and our fuel filter. So this is the fuel filter unit. This is the fuel pump unit right here. Um, this is being replaced, obviously, remember, because we had that crack. Um, and uh, my friend Brett actually sent me one out and it'll be here tomorrow. I did uh, take your guys' advice and I'm gonna go ahead and replace these mounts because uh, a lot of you guys mentioned that the tabs aren't enough to hold the weight, which seems reasonable. So, I mean, I did build these to go underneath here and I built it so this is actually on top of this. But instead what we're gonna do is I'm gonna run a piece of uh, kind of square, something similar to that. Um, and it's gonna run across this side and across that side. So the tabs will bolt in and keep it centered, but the weight will be managed on the right and the left side. A lot of you guys mentioned straps. I'm not sure if we would need straps, but this is not a race car anyway, so we're not even gonna worry about straps for now. If for some reason we want to pass tech inspection and they want to see straps, um, we will build straps at that time. It wouldn't be that hard. We just have to run them around the outside. Uh, so that's it for the fuel cell. We're gonna move over to the uh, cooling system now and uh, start poking at that. All right, so this plastic doohickey right here, the inside of this is a little shelf that holds the uh, radiator. This is a little slide-in lip thing. So that goes on there like that. And then if you ever need to take these off, you just press this plastic thing in and it slides over the lip. Uh, so these need to get welded 32 and a half inches away from each other onto uh, the frame. Now our frame rail isn't going all the way out yet. We haven't really designed the finished part of the front of it. So we're gonna probably just weld it onto somewhere around here. Uh, temporarily until we design the rest of that frame rail. Um, so these are gonna be at an angle because then we want the radiator to angle up and um, connect in over here to a bar that we're gonna build that has to be removable that's gonna go across. Well, my plan to quickly whip up a uh, cooling system mount uh, went a little bit sideways because uh, the thing that I was struggling with yesterday when I was looking at this stuff and designing this stuff is the same thing that stopped us today. We don't have enough frame rail to work with. And um, Eric finally beat some reality into me and said, we gotta build the rest of the frame rails first or at least the posts off of them. So, uh, and I do agree now, we don't have enough time to do it tonight, but what we need to do is we need to cut these things back a little bit uh, and then we're gonna uh, put, weld a plate onto here. It has four holes in it. And then we will build a uh, traditional kind of a drift um, style uh, impact bar or what a lot of people call a bash bar. I'm calling it a bumper on this car uh, because um, the uh, Rocket Money kit uses a faux bumper. That's like a fiberglass bumper. Um, and uh, or people run without bumpers on these cars. And like I said before, I'd like to just have something because I feel like something's better than nothing. Also give us a lot of good mounting tabs to mount things like the front bumper and the front grill and the front fenders and all sorts of other good stuff. So we're gonna build one. Um, that's gonna happen tomorrow. Um, and then the other thing that kind of held me up is if I take the radiator out of here, we're having a little bit of a battle with my um, fuel filter. That's the thing right here. No, not fuel filter, sorry, oil filter. That's right here. These are all oil lines that you're seeing right here. Those two uh, braided lines and these right here, these are oil lines. And then this is the uh, stupid like EGR stuff. It's for, uh, it's to make your car more environmentally sound and uh, just stuff we don't care about at all. So that's gonna get deleted. Um, and then the problem that we're running into is that hose is really, really small. So it doesn't actually have a lot of room to put this somewhere else. And this used to tuck down right where our um, front, cross member, what's the name of this thing? Come on, Chris. Subframe, front subframe, that's what this is. I know I know my things, okay guys? So uh, normally, the front subframe is tucked m much further back under the engine, right? Well, since we moved our engine back in relation to the subframe, this thing went back as well with it, and then now it used to just tuck right under that frame rail right there, but now we have a front subframe in its way. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna um, troubleshoot in that area. I'm gonna uninstall that EGR can over there, it's the other half of the bracket, see if I can find a nice little place for that to live and also not piss off the coolant hoses because you can see right now it's blocking both of them 
If we put the radiator right here, and we put this right there, that coolant hose is not gonna have a good shot to the radiator. Well, this was quite tricky because uh, there's this this bar going across here that I, I, I rather like. I kind of fell in love with it. It doesn't even have to be there. But um, yeah, so I was working everything kind of around it and, and playing with it and stuff like that. And actually, it's, it's a benefit either way that I see it. So uh, hopefully you guys saw in the time lapse that there's one option where um, this is flipped upside down and it's run underneath here. And um, the oil filter and thing, whatever, starts right about there and it comes out to here. Uh, the only issue that I see there is that that sensor right there comes poking out straight towards my radiator um, and it makes the radiator be a little bit further forward than I wanted to. Now this is the other way that I figured out to mount it, but um, you guys may notice that that's actually upside down um, from the regular way. The lines seem to be okay with it. I mean, they're, they're doing a little whoop-de-whoop, -whoop, but they seem to be fine. Um, and there's, there's a lot of options for mounting this thing as far as uh, if we did want to do it this way, we could definitely get a really good mount in here. Now what I want to ask you guys is, um, those that are super knowledgeable about this BMW stuff, is mounting this thing upside down going to be a really bad idea? I know on lots of BMW engines actually that kind of is mounted that way, where you have a little cap that you take off and then you put the oil filter back in. But um, yeah, with this one, is that is that going to be a real big problem? I don't know what this is. I assume this is a sensor. It's not power to a motor in here or whatever. But I, I did hear that this car has like a faux dry sump system. And yeah, so I, I really don't know. I mean, obviously, if it has a dry sump system, it should be able to pump the oil no matter what way it goes. I, but I mean, the oil comes in at a spot right here anyways. I don't think that gravity could have much to do with this, right? Oil pressure is going to obviously have to do with it. Um, and it's going to route through the oil filter and back around and then through into the oil cooler and then obviously back. So I don't think it would mess anything up doing it upside down, but I would really like to know everyone's opinion um, on this and, and if it's going to cause problems. Because if it's not going to cause problems, I kind of like it in there like it, like it is right like that. I think that that would really work out well. So let me know in the comments below or shoot me an email. All right, guys, that's where I'm going to end this one. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we got new merch coming into the store very, very soon. Probably by the next episode or so, we'll have all that stuff ready. So that's going to be huge. We got new shirts coming. We got garage banners. We got two different types of garage banners. We got two different new shirts and um, something else I'm forgetting. Oh, key tags are back. So new merch drops later this week. So please tune in for that. Other than that, we got Dees for Drift is in the stores now. Check it out. Android, iOS, it's free. If you want a fun drifting game on your phone, I highly recommend it. Hell, I even worked on making it, and it's, it's a really fun game. Let me know. Hit me up in the comments if you got all Platinums yet on all levels. I do, because I'm good at drifting in video games, I guess. Tomorrow, we will get that radiator mounted in a very cool way. I've got a design for the top that I'm really actually digging now, too. So uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look good, and it's going to be very functional. So that will be awesome. And then we're also going to jump into the dashboard stuff. So please join us for that. If you like Beast for Build, you want to help out and support, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. Beast for Build on Instagram. That's it, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace! Come on.